Northern Avenue, Nerevan, this is Civil Net's Daily News Digest. I'm Maria Titizian, and here are the top stories from Monday, March 10. Another Armenian from the village of Eringar Marakhpur is in Azerbaijani captivity. Also, protests over the controversial pension system continue. Plus, celebrating International Women's Day in Armenia. And later, see how the tradition of baking bread has become a celebration. Yet another Armenian from the village of Eringar Murakhbir and the Davush Mars, who inadvertently crossed into Azerbaijani territory, is being held by Azerbaijani armed forces. 23-year-old Arsen Khojoyan, a young shepherd, lost his way in heavy fog and was captured. Armenia's Commission on Prisoners of War, Hostages and Missing Persons confirmed Khojoyan was in Azerbaijani captivity. Herine Khojoyan, the daughter of Mamigun Khojoyan, the 77-year-old man who was tortured by Azerbaijanis and repatriated last week, said that Arsen's family lives in very difficult social conditions. They have one daughter and six sons, and livestock farming is their only source of income. Azerbaijani authorities have confirmed that they are holding Arsen. The International Union of Compatriots of Davush Mars has sent an open letter to the heads of the United Nations Office, the OSCE Office, and the International Committee of the Red Cross in Yerevan in connection with Armenian villagers being taken captive by Azerbaijan. The letter notes that Mamigon Khojoyan, who suffers from mental illness, was tortured while captive. It further states, we ask and demand that you present the problem to the world through your channels and put pressure on Azeri authorities to condemn the inhuman treatment of a peaceful civilian, which contradicts the Fourth Geneva Convention. It is necessary to take urgent action as there is a new case of border violation. A resident of Davush Mars, Arsen Khojoyan, is in Azerbaijani captivity. At the same time, we ask you to present the results of your work to the public as this is also in your interest. To remind our viewers, the Fourth Geneva Convention defines humanitarian protection for civilians in a war zone. Azerbaijani military forces have violated the ceasefire regime on the line of contact between nagorno karabakh and Azerbaijan 200 times between March 2 to March 8. According to the nagorno karabakh Defense Ministry, approximately 1,300 shots were fired by different caliber machine guns at Armenian frontier positions. In a statement, the Defense Ministry said that the adversary's actions on the front lines were, quote, quelled. The civic initiative Dem.am, or I Am Against It, has been on the forefront of protesting the controversial new pension system. They organized yet another demonstration in front of the Ministry of Finance on Friday, March 7, where there was a heavy police presence. Protesters were holding signs and throwing coins at the ministry, chanting, shame on you. Protesters demanded that Minister of Finance David Sarkisian meet with them. Several ministry officials came to negotiate with the protesters offering alternatives to their demands, but all were subsequently rejected by the organizers. As tensions rose during the protest, scuffles broke out between police and demonstrators. Three citizens were arrested and taken to Gentron police station. The protesters marched to the police station to demand their release. There they were confronted by a large number of security forces who surrounded them and would not let them near the building. According to Civil Nets journalist on the scene, the police were also preventing reporters from doing their job. Earlier that day, the Civic Initiative issued a statement. The Ministry of Finance has been pressuring and forcing employers and accountants to complete transfers to the pension bridge accounts and forcing workers to pick a pension fund and administrator. The Ministry has been exceeding its scope of authority by pressure, spreading misinformation and terror. As citizens of the Republic of Armenia, we should not allow the Ministry of Finance to exceed any jurisdiction. The Constitutional Court suspended two articles of the law on accumulative pensions until March 28. Those citizens born after 1974 will be incorporated into the new pension plan. Those who are to be part of the new pension plan will have to accumulate their pension in a pension fund which will be managed through designated fund administrators. Since the introduction of the controversial law, protests have been organized by employees of the South Caucasus Railway, the Alexander Spendiarian National Opera and Ballet Academy, Yerevan Metro, the Electric Networks of Armenia and the Medzamor Nuclear Power Plant. Armenia and the world celebrated International Women's Day on Saturday, March 8. It is a day when women are recognized for their achievements and serves as an occasion to look back on past struggles and accomplishments and more importantly, it looks ahead to the untapped potential and opportunities for future generations of women. International Women's Day emerged from the activities of labor movements at the turn of the 20th century in North America and across Europe. 
The first National Women's Day was observed in 1909 by the Socialist Party of America to honor the 1908 garment worker strike in New York where women protested against horrible working conditions. In 1920, the Socialist International in Copenhagen established a Women's Day, international in character to honor the movement for women's rights and achieve universal suffrage for women. In 1911, as a result of the Copenhagen Initiative, International Women's Day was marked for the first time. Since those early years of struggle, International Women's Day has assumed a new global dimension for women in developed and developing countries. I got a chance to talk with member of Italian Parliament and Honorary President of Socialist International Women, Pia Logatelli, via Skype, about the significance of International Women's Day and the need to keep struggling to achieve parity for women globally. Take a look. The fact is that some people celebrate and offer flowers, but many of us say that this is a symbolic day, but uh, so to say, a day of uh, fight, so to say, because uh, political rights, but not only political rights, are there for women. So it is a symbolic day to make our fight for equality even stronger. To watch the full interview, you can follow the link on your screen. In Armenia, March 8 has come to signify a day where women simply receive flowers. In recent years, however, there has been a concerted effort by women's organizations in the country to shift the discourse and begin advocating for equal rights, equal access to opportunities, and that women who constitute about 52% of the population be involved in decision-making processes in the country. We can never hope to achieve democracy if women are left out of the process. A march organized by civil society activists dedicated to the protection of women's rights took place on Saturday. Marchers chanted Amot Che, or it is not shameful to talk about a wide range of topics that are considered taboo in Armenia, such as domestic violence. And here at CivilNet, we prepared a short video written, produced, and directed and edited by women for Armenian women. Take a look. Yes, Kinem. Yes, Kinem. Yes, Kinem. But I don't know what to do, Avali. Yes, Kinem. Yes, Mayrem, Kin, Kui, Dutter, Yevenke. Yes, Gortarare. Yes, Matahoksum, Marty Huntinero. Yes, Papa Hutunem Beru. Yes, Karevore. Yes, Bartem or Yes, Kunik Marta. Yes, Benutan Paspane. Yes, Pavrave. Yes, Kinem. Yes, Pesaskuri. Yes, Azata Martiken. Im Karogutunel Nas Amana Paken. Yes, Angahem Yukatvat. Imir Azankner Nirakane. Yes, Ashari Mangalum Nunem. Sireli Kanai. Snoravur Kanans Mijas Gain Nor. Snoravur Marti Ut. Snoravurum and Kanans Mijas Gain Tone. Snoravur Marti Ut. Snoravur Kanans Mijas Gain Nor. Snorhavor Marti Ut. Armenian President Serge Sarkisian was in Ireland late last week where he attended the plenary session of the European People's Party in Dublin. During his speech at the session, President Sarkisian spoke about the nagorno karabakh conflict, accusing Azerbaijan of xenophobia. He said, It is incomprehensible and unacceptable to us when any manifestations of fascism are being tolerated, when evident hate speech of the President of Azerbaijan, a Council of Europe member state, is pretended to go unnoticed. For the Eastern Partnership to work effectively, we should employ straight and honest talk on the issues of reciprocal concern. The president also noted that Turkey has not lifted the blockade of Armenia. He noted, Today, as humankind prepares to mark the centennial of World War I and the horror it unleashed, Turkey continues its policy of denial, attempts to bury the memory of more than one million victims of the Armenian genocide, and disregards demands of a nation that was deprived of its homeland, refuses to repent for what was done and thus pursues a xenophobic policy that at its root is aimed at harming Armenia and Armenians. Sarkisian also addressed the crisis in Ukraine. He said, The Ukrainian events are a matter of serious concern to all of us. We regret profoundly the loss of human life in Kiev. Under the circumstances, it is necessary to take all possible measures in order to ease the tension and find reasonable solutions by the means of a dialogue. Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan, which are the founding members of the Customs Union, have not recognized the current government of Ukraine as legitimate. 
So Sarkisian avoided making any statements about the legitimacy of the new government in Kiev too. As part of his working visit to the Republic of Ireland, Armenian President Serge Sarkisian met in Dublin with head of the European Parliament's EU-Armenia Parliamentary Friendship Group, Eleni Tiakoros, and Averov Nyafitu, leader of one of Cyprus's leading political forces, the Democratic Rally Party. An Assyrian member of Turkey's parliament, Errol Dora, from the pro-Kurdish Peace and Democracy Party introduced a bill to amend the citizenship law in Turkey. The bill envisions granting Turkish citizenship to the descendants of those who were deprived of their citizenship after the dislocation in 1915. Those include Armenians, Greeks and Assyrians. Dora also noted that famous Armenian artists William Saroyan and Aram Dikran had wished to be buried in the lands of their forebears, but even this was denied them. The MP stressed that the new bill would rectify similar mistakes. According to the proposed bill, those who wish to receive Turkish citizenship would have to provide the following documents. An Ottoman passport or similar document proving residence, church or synagogue records of birth, registration documents confirming membership of a minority group, documents of ownership of residence, Ottoman documents including military records, travel documents, marriage certificates or property ownership, records of new places of residence as a result of exile from Turkey. Over the weekend, a very special festival took place in a small village in nagorno karabakh The women of the village of Khansk in the region of Askeran woke up in the early morning hours of March 8 to light their tonirs in preparation of a bread festival, or as we say in Armenian, Ton Rahat's festival. This event, the first of its kind, celebrated the long history of baking bread in a tonir, or an underground earth oven, that Armenian women for a millennia have been doing. The heat for the tonir is generated by charcoal or wood, exposing the bread to live, fire and radiant heat. Hundreds of people from surrounding villages, including the president of Artsakh, Baku Sahagyan, took part in the festival. Village women dressed in bright traditional attire break their bread in the tonir. Children put on performances and organizers say it's a way of maintaining traditions and encouraging tourism to the region. The exchange rate is up on your screen as we take a look at your forecast. It's going to be a cloudy day in Yerevan with a high of 20 and a low of 6. Gimri will have a high of 9 and a low of 1. In Stepanagert, the capital of Artsakh, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 12 and a low of 3. And our travel forecast takes us to the ancient Armenian city of Van, where it will be raining with a high of 10 and a low of 5 degrees Celsius. The area around Lake Van has been inhabited by humans since 5000 BC. During the Urartian period, the area of Van was known as Biaina, and the city of Van was called Dushpa. Dushpa served as the capital of the Urartian kingdom in the 9th century BC. The kingdom of Urartu was at one point so powerful that it rivaled the empires of Assyria and Babylon. Today, remnants of the Urartian castle overlook the city of Van, and within its walls, several cuneiform inscriptions have been left dating back to the 8th century. After the fall of the Urardian kingdom, the Armenian Orentid dynasty continued ruling the kingdom in the 6th century BC. In the Persian Behustan inscription, Urardu and Armenia are synonymous. Being located on the crossroads of trade, Van was invaded and conquered by many foreign invaders. By the 2nd century BC, Van became part of the Armenian kingdom and a major center under the rule of Armenian king Dikran the Great. According to historian Movses Khorenatsi, Van was known as Tosp in the 4th century AD, a direct continuation of the Urardian name Dushpa. During the Middle Ages, Van was again conquered by foreign powers, this time the Arabs. After the decline of Arab rule, Armenian rulers once again re-emerged and were ruled by the Arzruni dynasty. This led to the emergence of the kingdom of Vaskuragan that lasted until the 11th century. By the 12th century, the entire area fell under the control of Seljuk and then Ottoman Turks. Up until World War I, Armenians and Assyrians constituted a large proportion of Van's population. However, during the Armenian Genocide, Van became a major center of deportations and massacres. Armenian, Assyrian and Greek populations were decimated. It was during this time that citizens of Van staged a resistance to counter Ottoman Turkish aggression in the region. They were largely successful and fended off enemy troops until Russian occupation. However, circumstances within Russia made it impossible for them to continue their occupation in the area and thus had to flee. The Ottomans re-entered Van, massacring all the remaining Armenians. After World War I, Van was eventually ceded to Turkey. 
Although the Armenian population has disappeared in the region, the Armenian presence has not. Many historically significant sites are located around the city of Van, including the Cathedral of Akhtamar, the Monastery of Katuts, Garmaravank, the castles of Van and Hosap, and others. Today, the population of Van is mainly comprised of Turks and Kurds and numbers well over 500,000 people. And that is our digest for this Monday, March 10. We leave you today with Nora Kardashian and the Van Ensemble playing Head Uaraj. Enjoy, and I will see you back here tomorrow.